You rolling? Rolling. Beth, Silas, Jason, Len, you rolling? I'm rolling. Clap us off. All right. Now clap. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you. Twelve shows, hard to believe, isn't it? It's been our privilege. I, I, I want to say it over and over again. Uh, this kind of started as a lark. We walked by the stage one day with, with Lois while we were talking about our exhibit in here. And I said, you ought to let us put on a show on your stage. And she said, okay. <laughs> and she's right back there. And ask her what that means when you say that to me. Lois is right back there. Lois Riggins sees that. There she is right there. She knows all about the music. She knows who's who and what's what. I lived up north for a while, and that was a political act. <laughs> this is a political act, somewhat. This is Mary Gaucher. Come on out. called Thanksgiving at the prison. <laughs> we stood in a long line waiting for the door to be unlocked. in the cold wind round the razor wire fenced in cell block young mamas with babies sisters and other kinds of kin at Tallulah State Prison Thanksgiving Day, we're waiting to get in. You gotta get here early. It don't matter how many miles you drove. They make you wait for hours.
time it looks so old now. Her hair is soft and white like the snow. And her hands tremble when they frisk her from her head to her toe They make her take her winter coat off Then they frisk her again When they're done she wipes their touch off her dress Stands tall and hair said I was born in New Orleans um, and I spent the first almost year of my life in a place called St. Vincent de Paul's Women and Infants Asylum. I was given up at birth by a mother I never met and I ended up as a songwriter having to write about it. I didn't really want to but um, sometimes the muse tells you either you write about it or I'm not giving you anything else to write about. In the United States uh, if an adoptee or a, a first family wants to find each other, um, it's impossible to do in all but a handful of states without breaking the law because uh, birth certificates are sealed uh, in that time period where I was adopted in the 60s and 70s. Uh, uh, America had and still in many places still has what's called closed adoption and so the records are sealed and people if they want to can't find each other. So you got two choices, really. You could uh, hire a private detective who will have to probably break some laws and maybe find the people you're looking for. Or you could become a private detective and break some laws and maybe find the person or persons you're looking for. Uh, and there is a movement now to, uh, to open those records and, and allow uh, uh, the original birth certificates uh, to be uh, to, to, to be seen by all parties involved, although it's not getting very far very fast. Um, all I want to say about that is this. I went out on a date one, one time with, with someone who looked a little bit like me. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's time to stop the secrets, lies, and shame and let people know who they are and where they came from. And in keeping with that, thank you, friends. We're going to play a little protest song, because after all, I am a folk singer with a southern accent. This one's called Blood is Blood. This is for all the first mothers and, and all the adoptees out there fighting the good fight, trying to get the records open. Thank you. 
and the adoptive parents as well.
Well, thank y'all for listening, and uh, once again, Tanya Elizabeth. Uh, the folks here at the Tennessee State Museum have been wonderful to us, as has Hippie Jack and the family, and we're real uh, honored to have been invited to be a part of this wonderful series, and uh, thank all the sponsors for making it possible. And we appreciate the opportunity to play these songs uh, for whoever is listening tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> Tanya and I always end the shows with a simple prayer, a little request, a glance skyward, and two words, mercy, please. Well, my father sure could use a little mercy now. His labor fall and rot slowly on the ground. His work is almost over. It won't be long. He won't be around. And I love my father. He could use now and my brother sure could use a little mercy now he's a stranger to freedom shackled
How old were you when you were adopted? It's about a year old. Really? Yeah. So that was always your normal life, and then one day, were they always open with you that you were adopted? Yeah, or? I always knew I was adopted. You did? And um, I never questioned it, and it just was my reality that uh, I didn't know my, uh, my natural mother and father, and adoptees for generations have never questioned that. Mm -hmm. And then we did. Yeah. And then we did. And, and now, more and more, um, uh, adoptees my age uh, uh, want, want to know where they come from. They want to know their roots because going through life with, with, uh, without that knowledge of your ancestors, there's a huge missing piece. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 uh, you hit the wall in a lot of ways. Um, so that's how I ended up uh, starting to, to, to turn that rock over and see what kind of little critters were underneath it. <laughs> 